time in the video review for you. This time we're taking a look at the next figure in the uh, 2012 BotCon box set. This time he is Soundwave. Now, Soundwave does not look like Soundwave. He's a car. That's all right. Uh, he is a repaint of Universe uh, Hound and Ironhide. Not Hound. Why did I say Hound? Uh, Ironhide and Ratchet. Uh, this is Universe Ironhide's vehicle mode. So again, another figure that we haven't uh, looked at the original figure of, but we're looking at a repaint of first. So he does have some really cool decos. Let's see right there. I don't even know what the hell this is. It? Cold, cold slither. Nice little music band things going on. The shattered glass. Decepticon logo. Got some bumper stickers on the back. I heart rock and roll. Lights plate says Soundwave. Got a guitar. Another one of the deco of the uh, that logo. Green headlights. Just overall cool figure. Definitely cool looking. Um, there actually was some controversy around this guy because on the box art he came with a headband and they were actually selling the headband for five dollars at BotCon and they were really cheap little plastic things. Um, they actually made fun of that at TFCon because they actually had uh, uh, the exclusive figure. Uh, Shafter had a headband they were giving out for free and it said uh, number two instead of number because it was the second headband because he was the first. It's just a little kick in the uh, in the teeth for uh, at BotCon. But I digress. Uh, as you can see he is a hatchback sedan. Uh, he does roll very nicely. He's got a grill guard. Uh, painted grill, painted green headlights. Uh, very clean looking, except for the billion panel lines. Uh, the transformation is kind of funky, and you can see all the panel. These are all all these panel lines. It's the only thing I don't like about them. But it does. If you just ignore the panel lines, he is a very cool looking vehicle. So uh, yeah, let's transform this guy. So first, we're gonna start by uh, coming down here, just getting in there and taking the weapon out. We'll look at that later. And he already started, I already started transforming him. So you can come over here and just pull these bits out under the wheel wells there. Those are floppy for now, don't worry, they end up getting strengthened later. Um, come under here and just pull this whole section up and crack it that way. And just fold this part, the uh, grill up, just fold it out of the way. Come over here by the headlights, lift them up. But what happens is, if you look inside, this is part of the leg, and that has to clear it. So as you see, when I unfold it, see it's got actually, this section of the leg is stored inside there. So that's why you have to lift this up so that it has clearance to fold out. So we'll go ahead and do that. Fold this uh, part down, and then fold that part up just to fill out the leg. Uh, push this part down, becomes the foot, and then fold this bit up. It's going to the back of the heel. So that's one leg. So again, fold the front uh, headlight out of the way, rotate the whole section so it gets caught on there, just be careful. Whole section down. I'm looking at the back, that's why. Uh, fold the, the uh, headlight in and then up. Pull the foot down, and just put that heel up. Now, next, what you wanna do is, it very easily will fold this way backwards, but what you have to do is fold it forwards, and it'll kind of snap like that, but that's fine, just going past the, uh, past that point right there. It doesn't lock in that way. It's still kind of floppy, but I mean, once it's all together, it's fine, but just be aware it doesn't lock in. Lift it up. What happened? Why, why, why are you getting ahead of yourself? Don't get ahead of yourself. So next, what we can do is... Just fold out these bits that become the arms, rotate them up, like so, and take the wheel bits and then fold them flat back. And then what you have to do is make sure this part, this is uh, folded flat like that against the back, and that allows see the wheels go in the in the windows there. You, that's what you that's what you're going to need to happen. So. 
and I think this bit came out. Okay. Is that coming off? Oh, and you also, I'm sorry, before you do that, fold the bumper down. And what happens is the bumper is actually attached to this blue plastic bit, and that actually gives some chest detail. It pushes that piece up and uh, fills in some chest detail. So this part's kind of a pain in the butt, so you just want to get that all folded back. And here you have sound wave mostly done. Uh, unfortunately, nothing in the back locks. So you just kind of got to deal with it. And now you can have Soundwave doing the, the Thriller dance. Yeah. Uh, so now you can just take the arms and fold them down, flip down the wrists, and rotate for the elbows. Again, fold down, flip out the fist, rotate at the elbow. And then here we have Soundwave in his robot mode. So we'll take a look at his, uh, you can see his face does look very Soundwave. And uh, one other thing you notice is that the rear of the car is actually the chest of the robot, which I thought was, which I always thought was pretty weird. It's cool, but it's different. See, I told you this bullet always wants to fold down. I just really wish this would lock a little bit, especially in the midsection there. There we go. So yeah, as far as Soundwave, he does have this backpack. Which can't be, which, oh, excuse me, it can't be avoided, it's just the nature of it, there's nothing, it doesn't lock, as you can see this is always wobbly, but I mean it does compact okay, it just will, it does stick out quite a bit. Ooh, I'm all gassy, I'm sorry, I didn't even drink any soda. Um, why is he all lopsided? Why are you lopsided? There we go. Okay. Sorry. So yeah, I do like the way he looks overall. I do really like this model. I like that the uh, those decals become forearm bits. And I do like the, the back with all the bumper stickers becomes his chest. Very cool. As far as articulation though, his head is only on a swivel because he's on a this back plate, which is something I always hated from G1. But it's not too terribly bad. At least you can get sideways pivot out of it. The shoulders like to pop off. Just like that. Um, they're just on this peg system. It's not a joint, per se. <clears throat> it's just a peg in a hole. So by rotating his... It does go in there pretty snugly. But, I mean, once you rotate it, if you say it just, it'll pile on the popping off because it's not secured as a joint. It's not the end of the world, but just something you should be aware of. And it does just pop right back in. But you do get full range of motion out of it. Which is a plus. And I keep feeling like he's lopsided. Maybe it's just me. Um, shoulder, it also has this joint for the transformation. Uh, it's hinge at the elbow. It can only go about 70 degrees because of the uh, the plastic there. Wrist rotates and moves in and out for the transformation. I know it looks like the thumb pivots too because of that pin, but that's just for this uh, motion. Hips well, uh, ro uh, rotates at the waist. Hips are on ball joints or universal joints? Universal, well actually just a swivel joint. Yeah, universal joint, we'll call it universal joint. Uh, upper part of the thigh. Bends at the knee. Uh, it's a little bit forward because of the transformation. If you bend this out of the way, you can get more movement. But that's kind of cheating. Uh, good bit backwards, not all the way though. Uh, foot uh, just forward and back for the transformation. So let's take a look at his weapon. Now his weapon is literally just Ironhide's weapon. And what it is is it's actually a double weapon. Um, I'm never. I was never crazy about this thing. 
uh, but it's on like a little it's on like a little spring to to put the different weapons in. But basically, if you put it in this way, it's gonna become a knife. And it's not even like a big knife. It's kind of a teeny little chinty knife. And if you could put it in this way, it becomes a chain gun, which is what I prefer. But uh, the way you, the, the way you attach it is he doesn't hold it. It actually becomes an extension of his arm. Um, I just like doing it on the left side. Don't know why, I just do. What we want to do is um, this scope part will be up, and there's there's an indentation right there, and there's clips right here, and then you just slide them on. You could snap it on, but it's just easier to slide it on. And there he is with his weapon, with his knife. Like I said, I'm not crazy about that. Uh, I do like the Gatling gun much better. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't have peg holes in his hand, so he can't actually hold any weapons other than his own. But I guess you could take two of these and dual wield them. It probably look okay. But there he is with his chain gun, which I think looks much better. But it doesn't really fit Soundwave, but what are you going to do? Uh, the only negative, the only other, well, the only other negative is you can still see the hand fold it up back there. Doesn't look too bad though. So overall I do like this guy. I I do really like this mold. Um, the panel lines you know, are a bit much in vehicle mode but there's literally nothing you can do about that. But uh, I still think it looks good. I think he looks cool as Soundwave. It's a very G1-esque head. I do like the decos and the decals and all that stuff. So yeah. This has been our look at uh, BotCon 2012 box set Soundwave.